I'm Erin Townley, the Early Childhood Manager here at Creative Discovery Museum. And today, I'm going to share with you one of our popular hands-on activities that we include in a lot of our early childhood programs, sensory bins. Sensory bins provide great experiential learning because kids get to touch, feel, see, hear, and smell all different materials. Young kids are like little scientists who are always making observations about the world around them. So they spend a lot of time engaging with these bins and it also provides kind of a calming effect, which is great. To make a sensory bin, you really need three main elements. You need a container, some filler, and then toys and tools to explore what's inside. Today I'm going to show you some examples of different sensory bins. All of the examples I'll show you today um, are in these kind of plastic storage containers, but if you don't have any of those, you can also use a large mixing bowl, some large deep baking tins, maybe a kid pool, or even your bathtub. Another little tip is that it's good to use like a towel or plastic tablecloth or sheet or something underneath your bin to kind of help with cleanup afterwards. The first bin I'm going to show you today has water in it and water is a great sensory experience and it's also really fun to explore and it's pretty easy. So there's lots of things you can do with water. Just having some cups um, for kids to practice pouring water from one to the other and they'll just sit and do this for a long time but it's really a great experience because they get an idea of volume and it kind of lays that foundation for when they learn about it later when they're older. You can also just provide different ways for them to understand how water moves. If you have paper cups, you just put little holes. This one has a little hole in it. This one's slightly bigger. So when they drip them, the water does different things. Or you can put sponges in there that they can squeeze and watch how the water fills and empties, or maybe even cotton balls. And then these eyedroppers are great too. If you have these, these little dropper things, they squeeze and then they can let out different um, amounts of water or even just little drops. If you don't have one of those, a baster is another great one too. And this one lets out a lot of fun water. Um, and then the other thing is just different toys that they can float. If you find things that sink, those are fun things too for them to practice with and different materials you can add, maybe help keep their toys dry or to help them sort of float like on a boat. So there's lots of fun things to explore in this water bin. Some other natural materials that are easy to find um, that your kids might be fun, have fun exploring are mud, uh, maybe rose petals, bird seed, sand, all sorts of things like that. So another type of filler that's really popular are um, to use different things you may find around your kitchen, especially beans and rice because they feel really cool when you run your hands through and they also make lots of cool noises. Um, in this bin, I've added some different kinds of containers. I have a cardboard tube, a metal bucket. You could use a can if you don't have a metal bucket, um, plastic bowl, you could use a plastic cup, that sort of thing, and a scooper. And so the kids can scoop into different containers and hear the awesome different noises. They also, they're different sizes. Um, so it would require different number of scoops to fill. So you can have them fill, maybe even count how many scoops they do if they're into counting right now. And it's also fun just to watch what happens when it overflows and watch it kind of spill back. So that's a fun thing to do. We also have a spoon here just to see the difference and how much you can fill up. Um, or if you want to do something really simple, if you have a puzzle at home, maybe an old puzzle like this where there's different cutouts, you can just put the pieces in the bin and then the kids can find the pieces and match them to the puzzle. So that's an easy way just to explore. Uh, and this rice too, we uh, went ahead and added some color and some essential oils so there's um, a little bit more visual and uh, smell smells that they can experience as well. And to add color, you can just uh, put it the rice in a bag with some paint and you know squish it around and then let it dry. So that's an easy way to do it. And that's what we like to do here. 
So here's another example of a bin that you can use. Um, this filler is just some stuff you might have around your house. I have shredded paper in here. Uh, if you don't have shredded paper, you can use cut straws, cut yarn, um, just things like that that you might find around the house. You can also, if you want to order something, Insta Snow is really popular, or water beads. But they're they're fun, wet, slimy little um, beads that you prepare ahead of time, and they're lots of fun to explore and play with too. In this bin. I've just included a lot of different things I had around the house. Some little toys, spindles, buttons, blocks, things like that. Um, and I just put two different colors to kind of have a theme. Um, the kids can kind of explore with their hands, maybe string some, um, string the spindles if they want on the string. I've also added tweezers, or if you don't have tweezers, tongs are a great substitute and just to provide a little extra fine motor challenge so the kids um, can take the items out and they can sort them by color um, to kind of practice some of their color identification or just to add a fun game element to it. You could also do uh, counting if you're working on counting and they enjoy counting at the time. You know, maybe I'll put, pick out just the spindles and put them on my mat. And, hey look, I got three spindles. So that's a fun way to kind of play with that too. Um, if you're really worried about the mess, you can also do things um, like put different materials in a bottle to shake or to put them in a bag to explore with hands. So there's lots of fun, cool sensory things you can do. Um, and I hope that these sensory bins have inspired you to try something at home with your child. Thanks for joining.